Hi, today's good person to know is Davide Shevlin. He's head of analytics at eBay, and his talk was all about the importance of big data. Since eBay's inception, they have been capturing data, and they have a ton of it, and it's Davide's job to dissect that data so that they can make better informed decisions. The customer is at the center of everything that they do, personas are a thing of the past, and if you do not give your customers a personalized experience, they will go elsewhere. And it was a real eye-opener to see what he meant by this because there are several times in the purchase cycle where your competitors could poach your customers, and this is why big data is so important. Davide defined what big data meant to him, and he says it's all about the four Vs, variety, velocity, volume, and value. And he also gave an example as to how technology aids the purchasing experience. In New York, they fitted out a shop window with this technology, and despite it being closed, customers were still able to try on dresses and buy them. Now, it sounds surreal, but I can very well imagine that this is the future of retail shopping. Davide also spoke of the four stages in the big data adoption and how they get sign off from the CFO. So I hope you enjoy this video and thank you for watching. For half of our history, we were desktop only. And now the second half is desktop and mobile. Um, and, and we could see a very significant difference in the customer behavior. You go home after work, you're tired, and then you sit in front of your computer and you choose to buy something online. Of course, I'm talking about eBay, but in general, you read the newspaper, you do all that kind of, uh, that kind of stuff online in the evening. But when mobile comes, the, the user pattern changes significantly because now we see people shopping when they are on commute, when they are on the tube, when they are on the bus, they're bored. And so they fill up that time. And what we could see is that the behavior is significantly different. What I used to do was I choose to dedicate my evening to online shopping, and therefore I'm in a shopping mode. And what I buy and how I buy has a specific pattern. While on mobile, I'm bored, I'm on the tube, I have to hop in, hop off, I keep disconnecting, reconnecting, checking things. It's more an inspirational kind of journey. So, and what do we do with this information? We can actually make informed decisions about how we submit the information to our buyers because we know they're going to behave in a different way and it's actually different people that, that behave in a different way. In Italy, even today, if you go to a, to a store, like a, let's say a tech store, um, and you want to buy a smartphone, what you do is you go in, you check the prices, and you take a picture with the phone, you check on Amazon, of course, and eBay, and then say, okay, if it's cheaper, I'm going to buy it online. What happens is if the shop assistant sees you, he tells you, you can't do it. I came here two years ago, and uh, I went to John Lewis in, in Sloan Square. And so I went there, and I was surprised by the fact that on the price tag, there, is, there, there were labels and QR codes saying, take a picture, so you can see all purchasing options. When I decide to buy something, I first of all share this desire with my friends, right? And I can. There's social media today, so I can share it with my friends, even strangers that follow me on Twitter, right? And they may have opinions. And these opinions are based on the experience they had, either with my need or with the product I want to buy. And so they, they interject. They can endorse and vouch for my decision, or they can say, ah, stay away from it. It doesn't make a lot of sense, right? And so it's so important to see that the, the difference that social media enables is while in the past you had to talk, you had to broadcast to each individual customer, it was the brand or the store and the customer. It was a collection of one-to-one -one relationships. And the damage you could do with one customer was limited to that customer and his close friends. Now it's all connected. It's, it's a cloud of customers that speak to each other about your product. And if you make one unhappy, that can hurt a lot. As you can see, there are lots of entry points in which any of the products that fulfill the need of the customer can actually come in and, and kick you out, kick your product out and say, oh, I don't want to buy this, why don't you buy that? It's actually better. Everyone says so, and so in the end you end up buying that. The journey is not significantly different than the past. There is a research phase, which is much deeper, more collective, and then of course there, are, there is the moment uh, of truth, the moment in which I decide to buy the purchase decision, 
and then it's about operations, so how easy it is, it's how easy it is to buy, how easy it is to you know, uh, pay, for example, there are lots of payments providers outside, um, and then the customer service, like what happens after I buy, am I taken care of? If I am, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you more customers along the way. Experiments that we do, we at eBay, uh, to see how the customer behavior changes if you use the technology that is available today. The only one I'm gonna talk about is the first one. So the first one is an experiment we did with Kate Spade in New York. This, this is like a, a beautified version of their window on their store on Fifth Avenue in New York. And so what we did was we, we, we put there a shoppable window. Shoppable window is a big iPad, basically no more than that, on the window where you can interact even if the store is closed. You can actually try on things on yourself. There is a camera that takes a picture of your silhouette and the dresses are put on you, and then you can see how you would look, more or less. You can actually buy. So you can input your email address or phone number. You will receive a message. You can pay with PayPal and get the product delivered to your place, which means this store can sell with no shopping assistance working. This is a 100% ROI initiative. That's very interesting. And what Kate Spade learned by putting this on the window is, well, actually, we can do even better if we put it indoors. What they were thinking of doing was to put this instead of with the street behind you, and so, I mean, you look as you, you would look on the street, they wanna put you on a green screen behind you where you can put pictures of, of cool places where you wanna try the dresses. If you think about fashion, fashion is very problematic to track in a store because what you do is, what everyone does is, I pick a few, st a few items, uh, I go and try them, then I choose one, I put the items back, and then the one I buy, I go to the cashier and I buy. So what does the company know about my purchase preference? They only know what I buy. They don't know what I checked and didn't and choose not to buy. With this, you actually have access to that information because you can see what people wanted and, and didn't end up buying, which is a very interesting piece of information that can inform the next collection. Is, is it a color? Is it the shape? Is it the price? And they tested these, these things like, let's let's change the price 10% off on this and let's see if it's a price elasticity issue. Or maybe the next year we can do a collection based on different purchasing behavior and trying behavior, not just the sales. So again, you can use these information to say it's cool, that's, that's one, one reason why. Or you can actually say, what does this tell me more? Everything else that you can do, everything, every other thing that wasn't available in the 80s that is available today is measurable. And because it's measurable, if you know which question to ask, it's actually unlocking more opportunities to get to the customer, to get under his skin and give him what, what he wants. So big data is, is a trend. This is Google trend. It, tell, it tells you how, how often a keyword has been searched. The name that it has, which is analytics, is, is not big data. It's just a lot of data, right? But then it's what you do with it that really makes the difference. So a lot of people ask me, how would you define big data? Um, this is one good way that I like to describe big data. It's called the three Vs of big data. Velocity, variety, and volume. So if you think about it, <clears throat> the center of this is 1980, more or less, where data was megabytes, batch processes. It was IT stuff. It was confined in the basement, in a dusty basement, usually, with a lot of fans <laughs> and air conditioning working. So then what happens is technology comes along and then you have more stuff, volume, so gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes. Interestingly, the more the size grows, the faster I need access to data. That's you know difficult to achieve because then you say, okay, I have a lot of data, and instead of waiting for the report to be available in two days, I want to see it now. And by the way, based on how the data looks, I want to make a decision. The dimension that brought uh, data outside of the basement in IT and into other departments is actually variety. Because when you talk about tables, databases, and so that's boring stuff. Right? You talk about pictures, audio, location, uh, social, video. I mean, that stuff is stuff that everyone understands. And what can you do with it? It's actually the job of a marketeer, of a salesman, operations people. So this is what makes data tangible. You can touch, you can understand, and therefore you want to do, do stuff with it. And that's why it's important that we understand, uh, we, we create a governance around data because otherwise everyone wants a piece of it and then it's impossible to actually make sense out of it. This is the three Vs, common use definition, 
my personal definition has a fourth V, which is value. And that's the why that I was telling you before. Why do we need, why do we care about all this data? Because we can extract value out of this information and make decisions that actually either reduce costs or increase sales, or in most cases both. I care about data, now what? The now what is phase one is record. So try and get all the information that you can about how your customer interacts with your brand or your product. And what you need is just hardware and processes to make sure that the information is recorded accurately. Phase two is, okay, now I have a bunch of data, what do I do with it? I create reports, so I can see trends. I can see what the data is telling me and I can make decisions based on it. Interesting is when you say, okay, I don't wanna just look at the trends, I actually want to start basing my decisions on the trends that I see, right? And that's when the, the governance over data leaves IT and it goes into where the decisions are made, which is marketing operation, it depends on the business function, but that's really the moment in which everyone wants a piece of it. The last phase is what we call predictive analytics, and this is where the machine take over, basically. <laughs> when you say, I don't want to make a decision based on data, I want to create a set of rules where something will make a decision on my behalf based on what I want as an outcome out of that situation. You can't do marketing for personas anymore. That's gone. You have to do marketing for persons. Individual people should see different things. That's what, what the industry calls personalization. Once an investment is approved, an action is approved, then we do, we do forecasting. We forecast everything that may happen. We do a business plan and then we track. We build systems to allow the BU to see uh, how that's going, which actually is good because we are not always right. Oftentimes we are wrong. But then we learn what mistake we made and next time the decision is going to be more sound and better. I couldn't help but focus on the shop window example while I was listening to Davide's talk because I thought it was a fantastic idea. Can you imagine putting your own backdrop to address to see how you might look at that event? I thought it was a fantastic idea and I can't wait for it to happen in the UK. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe to see more and thank you for watching.